welcome everyone and uh, hopefully the rest of the people out there can get their coffee and come back in. And so this morning we uh, heard Rebecca talk a little bit about um, some of her thoughts about where FTI is in respect to OCP and some of the forces or some of the ideas for long-term investment. And what I wanted to do was, dry, uh, was talk a little bit about, and then we heard a bit about some of the projects going on today. And what I wanted to do was focus a little bit upon what might be tomorrow with the OCP FTI and what uh, might be some areas that we need to think about in terms of new projects, new areas for ideation, and, um, sorry, oh, there we go. And what you see here is something that it's a derivative of the different forces that I mentioned in my talk uh, title that Rebecca's gonna talk a little bit more about tomorrow. So I wanna drive a little more deeply here in terms of the community-led innovation where we need the help from the research community to take the ideas that are coming from hyperscalers and create an open innovation environment and talk about what kind of problems we want to look at as we move forward into the future. So this is, this is linked to what you heard earlier in the sense of IT ecosystems will be about thinking about, thinking about computation all the way from the cloud to the edge, and all the devices that we need to place into the marketplace to achieve that and manage it. When we think about some of the work going on around workload diversity, we look at what's the future for silicon, and do we get to a level where we're now thinking about composable silicon, something that I think is going to happen, and that we're going to need to understand the role of the OCP and what is the research needed to allow that to happen. And of course there's sustainability and the big question is sustainability is such a big area. What is it about sustainability that we want to bring forward for the futures program at the OCP? And so what I want to do is share with you some of the results from a study we commissioned and put my interpretation on it as to what we can get out of it. And so one of the things that um, we did is we asked people, what are the reasons for using OCP recognized equipment? And coming to the top, looking at those organizations that are most familiar with the OCP was leveraging hyperscale innovation. In which ways? to get more efficient equipment designs and operational methods for reducing energy consumption. That's what people are looking for, those that are familiar with our equipment. The other thing is to bring automation to the table and do a better job of managing more equipment with less people. And also be able to do customizations because no two data centers are alike, no two IT ecosystems as we move out to the edge are going to be similar, and there's going to be a requirement for customizations. Other elements that people look for is going to higher compute densities. As some, they look in the co-location providers, they're looking for ways that they can provide facilities now that can house OCP recognized equipment. The other element that's really important is the potential to make equipment that is reusable and feeds into the circular economy. So all these are innovations that are happening in the hyperscale world that people deploying OCP recognized equipment are looking to leverage. The other big thought for me is that af after servers and storage, the biggest investment, or one of the biggest investments, is edge computing. And I've already seen a couple of talks here today which talk a lot about the rack and the data center, but it's the rack, the data center, and the equipment out to the edge. It's, they're not separate silos. And so in some ways it takes a reset now of our thinking when we think about an IT ecosystem versus a data center. And I think that's a really important message and something that the 
OCP can do a lot to help with, especially the futures um, initiative, because that's where some of the new ideas are going to get born, especially around the edge and the hardware at the edge. Uh, it's very in other surveys I've done, it's very clear that AI and AI acceleration is a very large part of edge computing, and there's going to be a lot of silicon for AI at the edge. So how do we manage that? How do we take the inferences, take the learning, the learning models, move the inference out to the edge, but then have some sort of synchronization between the two? And do we do more learning at the edge and bring it back? So all of these things need to be thought about, and those are some of the hard problems I hope that we'll be tackling in the years to come around the Futures Initiative. So there's much more around the edge, but I, I want to keep moving forward because there's lots to cover and I've got nine minutes left. And um, we can talk about it more. I'm around the rest of the day. And then this is one that's very close to my heart because I think we've all heard about composability. We've heard about composability in the rack, doing away with the server skin, but composability at the silicon level. We already do have a project in the OCP looking at this, and I believe it's really the start of a very new way of designing and building integrated circuits. But I think there's much more work to be done, and there's still feeder work from the academic and research community to help. And when I think of composable silicon, I think about an emerging economy and a new marketplace and so what's composable silicon, before I go any further? The idea that I can take different tiles of silicon, if I may call them that, some people call them chiplets, and I can stitch them together through some sort of common physical bus or wires that have, like networking, have a physical layer, have a link layer or protocol, and these individual chip dies can then be stitched together and integrated onto a single integrated circuit. And it goes farther than that because if we look out to the future, those chip dies can come from different companies, different intellectual property, and now we get a whole ecosystem where the different dies needed to support a particular workload are assembled custom for that workload. And that's really what's, uh, what, what gets exciting about it is because we now think, can think of an integrated circuit as being composed by specialized individual components. And I think that will make a, this is a very fertile ground for innovation. And we're very early days into this market and to the potential here. So this is an area where there are hard problems to solve. And we may have to convince some of the vendors that being open and helping create this market is important. And that is precisely, I think, the work of the OCP and the FTI. So think of composable silicon. The next area that I think is really important for people to think about is sustainability. And yes, I know everyone's been talking about sustainability now for many, many years. And even myself have been going, well, I hope it's more talk or less talk and more action that we're going to see in the next few years. And well, the results from our survey seem to indicate that in the same survey that I mentioned earlier, where we asked people in your organization, do you have an active sustainability project? 73% or over 70% said, yes, they do. And um, that tells me that the sustainability drive is moving from the realm of discussion to actual investment. And so the OCP in general needs to collaborate with other agencies because we don't want to get diluted. There's a danger here that we start to miss the mark in terms of what we want to achieve at the OCP and the FTI. So we need to, in my mind, stay focused on sustainability as it relates to the IT ecosystem. That is the data center buildings, the physical infrastructure, the IT infrastructure, and the edge locations. We really want to look at that and really focus there. And in fact, in another survey that I did, surveying OCP members, I asked them, you know, what can the OCP do to help with sustainability? What are you looking for? And I think this is great because 
we can find some of the realities of how OCP and the FDI can help. And we got some very clear messages around leading the way through focused projects because that some of the members are saying they don't quite know where to start. The other thing is they need help understanding how to set reasonable targets based upon the experience of the hyperscalers. Because the hyperscalers in some sense are walking first in those tracks. The other thing is metrics. What metrics can we use for IT equipment? We hear a lot about PUE, which is great for measuring buildings. But there's also discussions around other metrics that need to be easy to understand, easy to measure, that we think the OCP can help in standardize. We also got asked for best practices, put some best practices forward in terms of how to achieve, achieve sustainability goals. And also, in some ways, help champion companies that do take the step, help make them visible, help promote that as a way to go forward. So that was some of the results that I wanted to share with you today. And um, I think uh, I'm going to leave you with a couple of takeaways that I think you'll hopefully you'll think about as you think about what will be the next things you can, or next projects we can do in the FTI. And one is, you know, what are the forces around IT ecosystems that are creating IT ecosystems to movement to the edge, around the need for data center sustainability, around the need for reuse of equipment that needs to be designed in. What are the ways in which the composable silicon market is going to emerge? How do we help build that? Are some of the areas for investment going forward? And it's time to take sustainability real. There are some real things we can do in the FTI. So with that, I think I have a couple of minutes left. I'll open up the floor in case there's any questions. Yes, do we have questions? I have a question if no one's going to ask. Um, the recent announcements by Microsoft and Meta for some of that uh, augmented reality uh, workloads through devices is going to particularly stress the edge in my mind. Um, if you had to say in the next five years, is it what type of growth, 3x, 10x, 100x are you expecting at the edge? Do you think that's going to drive some of the edge needs? Yeah, actually, you're talking about the metaverse? Yeah. OK. Um, so I actually learned about the metaverse reading the book called Snow Crash, which maybe many, maybe most of us have read. And it's great science fiction at the time, but I actually think we are there. And we've actually been on the path because the internet is nothing but the early version of the metaverse in my mind. And um, I think that that's definitely a force multiplier. Um, I could easily see a few X. I don't know that I'd go 10 X <laughs> as a multiplier, but then when we look at the multiplier, the multiplier of the equipment, the multiplier at the edge, which where is it multiplying the equipment? And the answer to for me is probably most everywhere along the path, mm -hmm. because I said it's an IT ecosystem. There's well, a lot of latency issues to solve with some of those use cases they were showing. There is a lot of latency issues, and that's going to the only way to solve that uh, is to going to be to put the equipment out at the edge, On right? Device or at the edge, yeah. right? Exactly. Oh, I see. Uh, a lot of thought along those lines are going to be needed around how do we achieve that, not only from a hardware perspective, but also from a software perspective, right? Because uh, now we're going to be having data ingestion in multiple locations. It's going to need to be synced. We're going to need to be doing learning and at different, at different locations, but still maintain a consistent uh, learn, uh, learning model that can be used for future inference. So there's a lot of work to be done there. In fact. I did see a good presentation by Qualcomm the other day about how device learning is going to be um, required to be done at the edge, but then consistency or con uh, consistency is going to be required to bring that back to um, the central data center to maintain the overall models and share it again out to the other devices. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Thank you so much, Cliff. Um, one of the things I want to follow up on while we bring up the next speaker is, uh, if you don't mind getting your computer set up, is uh, the, the part of the sustainability message that Cliff is touching on. We have a keynote from someone who wasn't able to be here from ARPA E, uh, up at Lawrence Livermore. So he's going to talk about public private partnerships between OCP industry and, and several governments around the world. So I encourage you to check that out online and through the live stream. Thanks, Cliff.